Hello everyone! Today I would like to show you how I did this three very different versions of the Red Queen of Alice in Wonderland and I did this with my alcohol transfer technique. I have a video on my channel with the basics of this technique. If you missed it I will put the link in the info box so that you can watch it. And for this um, I tried something new of this technique and um, I bought some very cheap ballpoint pens. That's um, yeah, nearly the only thing that you will need for this technique. Um, such ballpoint pens and some alcohol spray. And I choose um, different colors in this store where I bought them so that I can build up the face in different layers. For the first layer I outlined the face and I added some characteristic things like this heart on her lips um, and also this blue eyeshadows that she has above her eyes and for that um, I scribbled around very long in different directions. If you watched the first video of this technique you know that this is a very um, surprising thing <laughs> when you do this but um, I have some experience now in this technique and I wanted this blue eye sh shadows be very intensive so um, I added more ink to them and also um, I added some shadows of her face um, and um, also some lines for the hair that I can find out where the hair um, has to be and um, then I added some very very light shadows under the eyes and uh, be, um, next to the nose and um, in the next step I sprayed it with my alcohol spray this is um, normally used to fix some uh, yeah, acrylic paints or oil pastel paints you can also use um, any alcohol uh, in a spray bottle you have at home and then I uh, pressed this uh, next page of my sketchbook down to the first and um, yeah, I tried to um, splash this eyeshadow a little bit with my fingers and this is um, yeah, something you can do like you want. Um, when you um, yeah, go around with your fingers like I do here, then it will a little be uh, that then it will be a little more abstract and um, the ink will go around like yeah, something like watercolor or yeah, something like that. And um, then I dried it with my hair dryer and as you can see the um, colors changed a little bit. Um, I was very surprised about this because the red ballpoint pen turned into orange. And uh, yeah, <laughs> perhaps it's because it was a cheap red ballpoint pen, I don't know. But um, yeah, you have to live with this when you do such uh, surprising uh, experiments with some thing like that <coughs> sorry and then I um, built up the second layer and um, I looked at the page that is above this first layer so that I have a little orientation um, what I do there uh, so the parts that are too light for me I added some more ink and um, yeah then I built up the hair um, that was very, very tricky because uh, you need very much ink. And um, yeah, I still uh, know that uh, this will turn into orange when I spray with alcohol. And yeah, uh, at this point I thought, oh my God, the Red Queen is the Red Queen because <laughs> she has red hair. <laughs> and uh, yeah, but i show you later how I solved this problem. And I also tried to get some um, light effects uh, in this, uh, yeah, on this point, but that was not so successful because the ink uh, goes everywhere when you spray it. And as you can see here, it's a uh, neon orange. <laughs> and yeah, um, on the first uh, page, as you can see here, it um, also becomes uh, orange and like a watercolor effect. And I tried to um, push it with my hand in the direction I wanted it. And um, the goal was to create uh, not such a typical um, picture of this Red Queen. Um, there are lots of um, paintings of her on Pinterest or Google where you can find this typical um, face of her. But I wanted that you can... Um, see that 
it is the Red Queen, but not this typical um, yeah, version of her. And the interesting thing is when you dry this red ink, uh, yeah, as you can see, it disappears a little bit. <laughs> not only a little bit. Uh, I don't know why this happens, um, but then I decided, oh, that's not so bad because um, I, yeah, as I said in the beginning of the video, I wanted to have three different versions. And for that, that's not so bad because it looks uh, very, very different on each page. And as you can see, the copies also are very, very different. Um, and then um, I decided to go around with my gelatos in on this uh, first version. So this is um, the version where I scribbled around. I hope you can see this. And um, I added this red gelato oil pastel to her hair. And then I blended it uh, with my fingers. And um, I think this light effects come out are coming out very uh, nice uh, in this case because of this um, orange ballpoint ink under it. And then uh, I thought, oh, okay, that's not so abstract and uh, yeah, not really a special thing. And then I sprayed with water. And as you can see, the paper gets very, very much waves. And um, first I thought, oh my God, I destroyed it. But then I thought, oh, <laughs> perhaps I can use this um, for my painting. And then I added um, more of this gelato uh, color and um, yeah, also uh, blended it, it with my fingers. And I uh, put a little bit on this waves so that it looks yeah something like a little bit vintage or destroyed. But um, yeah, no. I don't know how to explain this in English. Um, it looks a little bit like broken glass or something. Um, and yeah, I like this very much. <laughs> I hope you like that too. Of course, you can um, use other paper for this when you don't like this uh, problem with the waves in the paper. Um, of course, when you spray water to this normal copy paper, like I have here in my sketchbook, then this will happen. Um, yeah, you can also try to iron it between these layers. Uh, but yeah, I liked it like it is and um, yeah, left it. <laughs> and then um, for the eyeshadows, I used uh, also the, the gelato oil pastels. And um, I used all the three different blues that exist in this uh, palette. And for the mouth um, and the heart on the mouth, uh, I also used this red from the hair. And um, then I added some uh, shadows in a very, very um, rough way to her eyes and the nose. And um, yeah, for the mouth, I used this Q-tip to blend uh, the lips a little bit. That worked not so well, I think. Um, because her mouth is also a very characteristic thing. And um, yeah, when you do this, you have to be very careful that you don't destroy it because uh, one little thing and um, yeah, on the wrong place and it's not her <laughs> suddenly. Um, yeah, I had to think about this very, very long and um, also the perspective, uh, is that the right word? Of her face, she looks a little bit uh, in the right direction. It's a very difficult um, thing with shading for me, um, but I hope uh, I managed it. Uh, yeah, on some way that's okay for me and for you. And then I decided to give uh, this uh, thing a little bit more of a mixed media uh, character. And <coughs> I added some uh, white acrylic paint with this bubble wrap foil. And then uh, I splashed her eyeshadows with, um, um, how do you say, watercolor. Um, and I think this was the point where I was very happy with this because, uh, yeah, that looks really strange, I think. And um, then I decided to blend the shadows I did before with the gelatos a little bit because, uh, yeah, it looked, uh, mm, yeah, something like uh, too rough to me and um, it didn't fit to this uh, watercolor uh, splashes that was very smooth and yeah the shadows were not so smooth and um, yeah 
in the end, I think I was uh, very happy how it came out. Um, and yeah, then in the very, very end, I added um, her eyelashes and some details to the eyes with um, yeah, such a black pen. Um, it was a little bit too thick for me. But uh, yeah, I have to choose uh, for the next time. I have to choose a little thinner um, pen for this. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think it's okay. And some highlights with this Uniball white pen. Uh, yeah, you know, that's not my best friend. And um, I don't like it so much. But uh, yeah, I need it white. <laughs> uh, and in the end, she looked like this. And I think I, I'm... Very happy about this. Um, for the second version, I used one of the other copies of this alcohol technique, and I decided um, that I wanted this only with a normal pencil. And um, yeah, I tried to find out where her eyes have to be, and I worked with this blending stamp and um, yeah, tried to get her very, very smooth and. Um, the most shadows I added only with um, the graphite that I had on my blending stump from, from the blending of before. Um, and um, yeah, I think this is a very good version when you have a copy that is not so intensive. Because um, yeah, you don't want to destroy your copy of this. And when you do um, more copies, like you can see in this first video I mentioned, um, then you have some that are very intensive. And um, the more pages you use for this copy technique, the more um, lighter versions you will get. Um, and for this, I think uh, this uh, pencil version is a very good um, solution because you can leave this lighter things and the pencil is not so intensive that you won't destroy it. And um, yeah, here I was very um, happy about this shading above her eyes because of this ballpoint scribbling in the beginning. I had this uh, shadows on the right uh, places, I think. And yeah, but this is something you have to try out and you need a little bit of experience. Um, how to do this and how to how uh, much ink you have to use. <clears throat> yeah, and for the, for the hair, I um, tried to get some light effects too. I hope uh, I managed it. And um, I used a pencil that's uh, um, very dark and then blended it with this very big blending tool and tried to get this uh, yeah light in her hair. And um, for this, uh, I can say I uh, used a reference photo from Pinterest. Uh, and that's a very good idea, I think, because uh, you can uh, see where the shadows and the lights have to be. And yeah, you have a little uh, orientation where to go. And this is the end product of her. Of her. I think this is my favorite of these three. And yes, <laughs> for the third one, um, when I did this video, I was not sure if I can show you that, but uh, yeah, then I thought, okay, um, let's try it. And um, for this, I used um, acrylic paint and I put it on this uh, page and then pressed the page above to the first page. Um, I think the last time I did this uh, was in the kindergarten. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we did some butterflies and uh, yeah, some uh, things <laughs> that kids are, um, yeah, that kids like. And um, yeah, in this point, I thought, oh my God, what am I doing here? And I can't see where the eyes have to be. And um, yeah, that was very difficult. But um, then I remembered a woman on face, and not on Facebook, on YouTube. And she said, um, don't stop it. She said, um, you can um, loosen up your paintings when you don't stop. And uh, yeah, when you use a very, very limited color palette. What I did here, I only had this uh, red and blue, black and green. 
And so I thought, okay, go on, go on. And um, yeah, uh, in between I thought, oh my God, I'm wasting my um, colors. Uh, but uh, yeah, then I came out with this uh, really strange thing. I think um, she's a little bit too dark, but the problem was this um, normal copy paper and it's impossible Mm, yeah, I think I have to say this. It's impossible to um, get a good result with acrylic paints on copy paper when you don't prepare it. And um, yeah, for me, there are very, very uh, much new things and I have to try them out. And yeah, <laughs> now I learned something new. For the hair and this black parts in the hair, I used um, yeah this black pen and also alcohol spray so that I came out with this. Now I have to say thank you for watching and if you like to see more videos like this please subscribe to my channel and if you have any questions or something to say please leave a comment. If you like to try out this technique by your own I would be very happy if you let me know um, something about your results. Perhaps you like to tag me on Facebook or send, send me a message. I would be very very happy to see some results um, that you created. So have a very nice day and see you the next time. Bye bye.